Hello and welcome to another edition of the Ask Dr. Pakel Show where we help people find answers with chronic health conditions, chronic health issues. All right, well today um, we want to start off talking about uh, a re this is actually a related video. We did a previous video on MTHFR. A lot of people were asking about that. They were saying, hey, Dr. Bell, can you tell me a little bit more about this MTHFR genetic issue? If you've never heard of this or you don't really have conditions that um, relate to this, you know, maybe this information is for you, isn't for you. I mean, it's still, it's great information that can help you and maybe even help you with your chronic health issue. And what I'm talking about is called MTHFR, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is an enzyme created by a gene called MTHF. And so basically um, gen genetic issues or epigenetic issues, let's say you have a gene for um, some, let's say you have a gene for some horrible, horrible health condition you could go your whole life with that without that gene ever expressing itself, actually ever causing you any problems. That gene may never manifest any problems at all, unless something triggers that gene to have problems. And these things could be physical stresses and traumas, emotional stresses and traumas, chemical stresses and traumas, things such as heavy metals, chemicals, infectious agents, things we're exposed to regularly that can have effects on our genes. And if these genes are affected, they don't quite make those enzymes as good as they should. They're still going to make a percentage usually, but not as good as they should. And those enzymes are important because they allow the production of things or the breakdown of things. And when we're manufacturing things in our body, which goes on day and night, night and day, these genes have jobs. They've got to keep the output going of these enzymes. And if something is holding them back, if, some, if they're malfunctioning, all kinds of bad stuff can happen to our health, our body, our energy. I mean, so many things. So we're going to, we've talked about MTHFR in that previous video and I get patients who come in and they'll say, Hey, uh, you know, my other doctor diagnosed me with an MTHFR issue. No wonder I'm having all these problems. I think this is the cause. Then they'll say, you know what though? Um, they told me to take some methylated folate and I did, and it made me feel worse or I didn't notice a difference, or maybe it did make you feel better. And maybe it maybe only made you feel better temporarily and then you felt worse. Um, or maybe you just felt great and it changed your life. So it could be any of those situations, but what if it did make you feel worse? What if it temporarily helped it made you feel worse or you didn't really notice a difference? Then we've got to consider other things because genes do not work in isolation. They work with their teammates. They work with other genes. They're all coordinated together. And if one has a problem and another has a problem and you only look at one, then you can cause problems down the line because as they work, there's kind of an order to them too. Now, MTHFR or this MTHF gene fits into a series of genetic happenings, a pathway, we will call it, that's actually what it's called, is a pathway of an amino acid called methionine that eventually turns into another uh, thing called homocysteine. So you can look this up online and it'll show you the whole pathway and it's all drawn out and it looks pretty complex and there's all these cofactors and yeah, so it's, it's interesting stuff, but to get from point A to point B, methionine to homocysteine takes, you have to have all these genes working correctly. So what, what happens if they don't? What happens if this MTHFR issue breaks down or one of these other genes that I'm going to talk about um, breaks down? This is the important thing because if they, if it breaks down, this has been known to be related to a lot of bad stuff. Um, actually what happens is your homocysteine levels go up, which can be measured on blood. And if you get elevated homocysteine, you increase your risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, um, end stage renal disease, which is kidney disease. Um, let's see here, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, cancer, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Really what happens is, is if it, homocysteine builds up, you get a lot of inflammation, a lot of destruction, a lot of um, oxidative stress, things start to break down. So you do not want homocysteine to rise. 
but that MTHFR gene plays a part and it requires methylated folate to do its job. But then we have its teammates that also are working too. And if they're not working right, the whole cascade starts to break down and then you start to feel lousy. So let's dive into these. Enough of me talking about this. Let's, um, let's go into this first one here. So this first one is called MTRR. I wrote the name there, methionine synthase reductase. And this one is mainly related to vitamin B12. So we not only had folate with MTHFR, now we have B12 playing a big part in this. How important is B12? Extremely important, not only in this, but throughout many other factors in the body. So what does this do? This, this gene, MTRR, activates B12. So if you take some B12, um, regular B12, let's say it was um, just says cobalamin on the bottle or cyanocobalamin, which you don't want to take, or adenocobalamin or, you know, some of these others. Uh, it actually, just like folate, just if you just take folate and you have an MTHFR issue, you can't activate that folate and use it. You have to methylate it. Same thing here, this methylates your B vitamin, so you, your B12, so you can use it. Um, otherwise, you get this, like I was talking about, a backup of homocysteine, and this can cause strokes, heart disease, high blood pressure, depression, migraines, birds, cancer, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, autoimmune issues. So um, pretty important that this gene's working properly along with the MTHFR um, issue there. Let's see if I can advance my slides here. Okay, I'm having just a little technical issue here. <laughs> of course, let's find my thing. Oh boy. Huh. All right, sorry for the technical error here. We're kind of ruining the, the video. Something's going on here. It's not letting me advance the slide. Okay, one second here. <laughs> Gonna have to cut that out of the video. There we go. All right, let's see if that works. Okay, so problems with this gene. All right, let's go on to the next gene. Now you got MTRR down. This is this co-worker um, of turning homocysteine into methionine. All right. And then also, how do you get this? How do you help this? Well, sublingual B12, especially methylcobalamin. If you're taking that, you're good. You could also take adenosyl cobalamin too. Um, and again, taking these types will help. Also, what else helps this gene? Because sometimes it's not always B12. Sometimes zinc is a cofactor here too that can cause this gene to not function properly. And where can you get this naturally? Eggs, beef, poultry. Again, two issues here, MTR and another one I'm going to talk about, MAT, can cause problems if you take methylated B vitamins. So if you have an issue with this gene and an issue with MAT gene, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and you're like, hey, yeah, I take my B vitamin, my B complex every day, my B12 every day, could make you worse. Some people are like, hey, I take B vitamins. I feel horrible. We may have an issue here. All right. Another gene here called BHMT1. Um, so BHMT1, this is another route of getting rid of that extra homocysteine. This is another player in this whole cycle of methionine to homocysteine. And this causes the production of s methionine called SAM. Maybe you've heard of a supplement called SAM-E, which SAM-E works in about everything in the body, but uh, a lot of times people will use it to help there with depression because uh, it increases dopamine and serotonin, but it also works with detoxification, energy production. I mean, so many things that SAM does, um, s adenosyl methionine. So pretty important. Remember this, if you elevate homocysteine, if these genes aren't working, you get increased inflammation. So you get all these kind of similar effects, strokes, heart disease, cancer, psychological issues, which is important because it, again, if you can't methylate B vitamins, if you can't utilize folate or um, some of these others, um, B12 and some of the others I'm gonna talk about, then yeah, this affects your ability to make neurotransmitters in the brain and can cause majority of 
uh, depression, irritability, um, just so many things across the board. All right. So another road for turning homocysteine into methionine. All right. And then here we go a little more about this. Another thing um, that you can do for it, you can take trimethylglycine. Uh, you can actually buy this in supplement form or DMG, dimethylglycine supplements. These will help this. These are cofactors for this gene. Not the only things. So sometimes if this gene is malfunctioning, you'll need resveratrol uh, to help get down inflammation and deal with some things with it. And then a lot of times you can get these things from meats um, and plant foods, but mm, a lot of times you may need a supplement if it's a really messed up gene and you have other health issues. All right, so here's the one I was talking about a moment ago, MAT or MAT1A methionine adenosyl transferase. So this transforms your methionine into SAM. We were talking about SAM earlier. So another one really important for that and that it's involved in the liver, the brain, the mood, the detoxification, energy production, so many other things. But again, extremely important in turning that methionine into homocysteine properly and not getting an overload of homocysteine. And again, this is another one that I was talking about. If you feel worse taking methylated folate, if you're like, hey, I have an MTHFR issue, I took that methylated folate, I felt horrible. This is one of the genes involved, MAT1A, strokes, heart disease, depression, migraines. If you'll notice, a lot of those are the same because all these genes work together to help with these types of issues. All right. And then where can you, or how can you help MAT1A? Magnesium is the biggest cofactor here that helps uh, with this. Uh, also eating avocados, nuts, legumes, seeds to get that um, pretty important. All right. So, and here's our last one in this series, AHCY, adenosyl homocysteinase. Also part of that cycle of turning methionine into homocysteine. I know I keep repeating that over and over. SAM production, recycling the homocysteine. Um, you know, that homocysteine, where does it go? What happens to it? Eventually it turns into glutathione. We have another video on that. And then it turns into glutathione and ammonia that your body needs to kick out. But so very important that we have homocysteine, but too much, major, major problem. So again, um, this is involved, when you make SAM with this, that's about 40 different processes uh, in the body. Like I said, body tissues, fluids, methylation, lipid ratios, enzyme activity, liver function, neurotransmitters, and then all these bad things, again, we're seeing, um, especially increased risk of low glutathione if this isn't working. So pretty important that this gene is working um, also here. All right. So how can you help this gene out? Well, there is a supplement called NADH. NADH is actually used in the production of ATP, which is energy. Um, but you can take NADH. Also, eating chicken, yeast, greens, uh, you know, criminy mushrooms. I've never had those. Um, taking SAMe supplement could make you worse or better better if the other pathways are involved. So some people will take SAMe because they really notice, hey, that makes me feel so much better. It clears up my depression or my irritability or feeling down or um, really makes difference there. But some people take SAMe and they feel horrible. This is because this enzyme is not working here. So it needs support and it needs to be able to do its job or otherwise this AHCY gene will not work properly. All right, so very interesting information. And some of you who this is like new information or you don't know a lot about this epigenetic picture, hey, there's tons of information out there. I'm trying to put add on to this because I have a lot of patients who ask me about this, who say, hey, what about MTHFR? What else affects it? Why do I feel worse when I take methylated folate or SAMe or some of these other B vitamins? This is our reasons. This process is not working right. So um, it needs to be um, taken care of. And it may require one puzzle piece being fixed by one supplement or multiple, depending on how many show up in your list of uh, um, issues along that pathway, your amount of genetic polymorphisms. Remember, genes are not your destiny. They're just a tendency. So genes can be helped. Um, in many ways, and uh, you don't have to suffer with that. All right, so I hope uh, everybody enjoyed today. Don't forget to share this. 
Um, I really appreciate that because a lot of people need this information. They're looking for answers. They're stuck with feeling lousy and they need some help. So everybody have a wonderful day. God bless. And 